and the Murphy administration is defending the pace of the program, claiming the process was complicated by changes in federal shipping schedules and a limited pool of clinicians available to administer the vaccine. The timeline for reaching that 70 percent rate of immunized residents could now push well into the fall, and experts say their work will be far from over. The director of Rutgers Global Health Institute says there's a good chance we'll need the COVID-19 vaccination annually. Dr. Richard Marlink is here with us now to explain. Dr. Marlink, thank you for joining us to share some of your insights on this. Do we have yet enough data to show how long immunity lasts once you do get both doses of the vaccine? Uh, no, unfortunately we don't. Um, we're just into the vaccine trials and the results. Um, they've been published that the immunity is very good um, over 120 days out after you've been vaccinated, but really that's only, um, you know, four months. So I think that uh, when we look at this, we know that that curve of uh, the, if you got a placebo, you, you got infected um, quite regularly. Um, but if you're in the trial groups, your infection rates were very, very low. We know that rate is going to start to creep up. Um, it just hasn't started to creep up yet. So we don't know how long the immunity is going to last um, with the vaccines. Given that limited set of, of, of data, what's the likelihood, if, if you could predict, that this type of vaccine will become a regular part of our lives, you know, a regiment like we go for a flu vaccine every year? Well, of course, we hope it's not that case and that's uh, one shot and we'll have lifelong immunity. But if we look at the related viruses in humans, um, that's not the case. Uh, we know with the more serious coronaviruses that we've had epidemics in the past, the original SARS and the MERS virus, those are serious, you know, lower respiratory infections and the immunity um, to that more serious uh, infection seemed to last longer, but it still waned. Um, and after a year, you could see the immunity coming down and certainly after two years. So if it's like the rest of the family of coronaviruses, the immunity will wane and we'd have to be re, uh, uh, revaccinated to boost the immunity, whether it's in one year or two years, uh, we don't know, but um, uh, it's predicted that we'll be needing to be revaccinated. Yeah, it's so it's so interesting, but I just want to ask you one more question before we have to let you go, which is about this notion of, of this slow rollout, you know, how we are um, administering these doses. Some countries, other areas have looked at perhaps changing the doses, just the amount of the vaccine that's given. Um, what's your take on that, the efficacy and whether or not we should be tampering with the recommended amount? Well, I think it's dangerous to tamper with what we've proven now in scientific trials, we can understand the emergency that's with us that we need to get this vaccine out as rapidly as possible and, and maximize its effectiveness. But I think where the uh, roadblock is, is really in implementing um, the rollout, not in the amount of vaccine we have, which is increasing as, as as manufacturers are making more and it's getting distributed to our states, but really the last mile, as we say in public health, getting the vaccine you know, out of the freezers and into people's arms takes a lot of people, a lot of uh, planning, a lot of money. Um, so that last mile is really the tough part. Dr. Rick Marlick, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Thanks, Brianna, for having me.